This is the Fearless Agent Podcast, where you learn how to make way more money fast selling real estate with your host, the fearless agent himself, Bob Leffler. And good day to you. This is Bob here at the Fearless Agent Podcast for real estate sales professionals like you, where we explain that every single thing you've been taught by the whole real estate industry is wrong, and you will make lots more money in way less time by doing the exact opposite. I'm joined in studio today by my guest host, the lovely Tiffany Berwind, who's also my neighbor and sales expert, and her puppy, Barbara Lee McScruffin. <laughs> and then, because uh, the puppy's too young to go out on it, can't stay home by itself. Right. <laughs> Goodness only knows what kind of disasters would befall us if it was at home. And then on the line, we have a caller, Tom Miller, famous realtor in Washington, D.C., who, uh, how are you, Tom? I'm doing great, Bob. Thanks for having you me. You sound fantastic. So uh, we talked a little bit about you. You are transitioning from a full-time job, uh, and you're doing real estate part-time currently, right? That's right, yeah. And you would like to transition to full-time in real estate someday, right? That's right. Someday sooner than later. Uh, the goal is, is within the next 12 months. Now – Give, give the folks out there um, that are listening, if there's anybody listening, or you think people are listening, I hope so, uh, <laughs> let, them, let them know kind of what your experience was prior to Fearless Agent, what, how Fearless Agent has impacted you, and maybe uh, how it's like for you now. Sure. So uh, I've been in business um, for about three years, and I'm licensed in uh, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, which is pretty common uh, in my market. And um, like Bob said, it's, it's been a part-time endeavor. And like a lot of agents, you kind of get your real estate license, you're testing the waters, um, seeing if you like it. And uh, for me, I, I knew that I did, and I really enjoyed it. My business has been growing. Um, and now it's, it's at the point where I'm making almost as much money in real estate um, as I am in my day job. And it's really a viable business, and I really want to make the switch and grow. And um, Bob is, has been and is currently and will be instrumental uh, in all of those, um, those those growth efforts. I think for me, um, basically, you know, the way that you run your business part-time, kind of doing it off the side, is, is going to be completely different than the way that you run it full-time day-to-day. And Bob is helping me lay the foundation, the groundwork for all that. And, um, yeah, he's just done so much for me. I mean, the the biggest thing is uh, just helping you improve your confidence uh, when working with clients. Uh, As I'm sure you've heard Bob say on some of his other podcasts, there's only a handful of situations that you'll find yourself in as an agent. And you really want to master those specific situations, whether it's working with a seller a buyer, uh, an investor, or an expired listing. And um, what I also really like about Bob that's differed from um, some other coaching and, and, and sort of mentoring that I've received is that with Bob, there's no credibility gap. Um, he's obviously been very successful in his uh, real estate career, and he focuses a lot, actually pretty much everything, on the sales training. Uh, you know, Agents, and I observe this uh, both when I'm a a seller's agent and a buyer's agent, a a lot of agents put in so much effort and activity, but they're not doing the right things and they're not doing it the right way. And Bob has been instrumental in helping develop the sales training because at the end of the day, this is a sales business. You know, we do try and cultivate relationships and, and, you know, repeat clients, but, but we are closing transactions and getting to an outcome. Uh, that's the best for our clients and ultimately do a closing. And Bob has just been um, very helpful for that. And another thing that I really like about Bob is that he always cares about his clients. So when I first met him, uh, you know, one of the, his favorite words are, you got to just get that out of your head, right? So as, as you heard in the opening of the podcast, he's going to tell you that everything that you've been doing uh, has been wrong. And, you know, there is a heck of a lot of truth to that. Um, but then he also, after getting all the bad habits out of your head, he really does uh, want to build you up and help you succeed. 
And I remember I was a new client and I was having a, a listing and, uh, you know, I followed his advice and it was very new for me and I was very uncomfortable and it was over the, the Christmas period. And Bob always had time for me, talking to me four or five times a day, uh, walking me back in the cliff, telling me exactly what to do. And at the end of the day, you know, we got to a great outcome and it's, you know, all because of Bob and, you know, the fact that he really, 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 really cares about his clients and will always make time for you and what he tells you, you can implement right away. Um, it's almost like having a professional golf coach, you know, watch you hit the ball and telling you, yep, move the club this way, do it that way. And you can see immediately, you know, your next visit with a client or your next interaction. Uh, when you implement his advice, you can instantly see the improvement. And uh, for all those reasons, I'm so thankful that I found Bob and, and connected with him. And as I transition and as I grow, um, it's just great uh, that, that he will not only help me just grow in general, but grow to be the very best agent that I can be, truly, truly, truly top in class. Um, as opposed to just being a good agent or even a very good agent. I believe Bob will help you become a world-class agent. Thank you, Tom. Um, now, uh, by the way, yeah. Tiffany, you never suck up to me like that. Why don't you ever you ever notice that? You never you never say nice things to me? I know, and when I was hearing Tom <laughs> talk, I was like, oh, yeah, he's I'm right. I'm embarrassed. Bob is amazing. I'm embarrassed. I should give you more accolades. <laughs> okay. All right, so, Tom, thank you for that. So uh, sure. let's just uh, talk about you here. What is your uh, and you and you do something in the economics? You're an economics kind of a math guy or something like that, right? That's your job, right? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an econ guy. Yeah, econ guy. Economics. That's right. Uh, thank God I'm not your golf coach, by the way, or you'd spend all day in the <laughs> rattlesnake habitat like I do. So, um, what is your average sales price? Not for your area, but for you personally. Right around four hundred thousand. Okay. And do you mind if I ask you uh, on the air how much you earn a year salary? Um, right. A little over, I think it's like 106, something like that. Okay. So, which really does not go very far in D.C. That's, that's uh, sounds like a lot of money in some towns, but in D.C. that's not that. So we, we, we want to get you out of that as quickly as possible would be my goal. So if you take, if you can write this down, four hundred thousand, and nothing's more exciting than doing math on the radio, Love it. kids. <laughs> <laughs> so four hundred thousand. Now every fearless agent in every town in America and Canada, in any price range, can always take listings at seven percent when everybody else is charging five or four total. So you're going to take listings at seven percent and keep four. So if I take four hundred thousand dollars times four percent. That's sixteen thousand dollars gross close commissions, okay. And realistically, half of that is going to go to the split and the write-offs. You know, paying me to coach you, the gas in your car. Uh, you know, when you make a big bucks, you're going to get a much nicer car with a much bigger payment. That's what, and we wear out our cars faster uh, than regular civilians. So that would be eight thousand dollars taxable income per transaction. So if I take 16,000, which is the gross, and you do 40 transactions in the next 12 months, and now this is a full-time model, uh, that would be 640 gross, and then that would be 320 net. So it would be $320,000 net taxable income, like it was a salary job with a company car. Do you get a company car, Tiffany? I do not. Well, what's wrong with that? You should go in there, march right in there, young lady, to. and ask. When I was a field rep, I did, but now I'm not in the field anymore. Really? So, okay. all right, <laughs> well, you might want to get into real estate, maybe, huh? Right. So you get a company car. So, so three hundred twenty thousand dollars net taxable income, like it's a salary job with a company car, because you do get to write off your car, and that's a big, big thing. So. Uh, or a bicycle in my area. <laughs> or you could take a bicycle because you can't find a parking space in D.C. What the heck is up with that? <laughs> yeah. I remember I went to a Starbucks in D.C. Maybe you can explain this. And and there there was a sign that said, do not leave your car running. Like, what, what's up with that? <laughs> what are they trying to do? Save gas or, you know, it's freezing. You need the car. You, you keep your heater running with a puppy in the car. That's right. 
<laughs> Barbara Lee McScruffin would freeze to death. OK. So uh, that's just one of the many laws and rules I would break. So don't worry about it, folks. You can park wherever you want. <laughs> now, um, so if you – so. If I take the 106000 that you're earning, and you get benefits and stuff like that. So what do you think if we annualize the benefits that you get? Would it be maybe 125 Yeah, give or take, maybe even a little more, sure. Let's do 150 yeah. just to be generous with the benefits. So 150000 By the way, if, you're, if you have a full-time job and you have health care and all that and you're going to do real estate, you have to factor that in. So, uh, you know, add 50 grand a year for that if you want. So 150, and then I do t- divided by 12 is 12,500. So you would need um, two closings per month to cover that and then some at the $8,000 level. Does that sound right? About, yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. So if you knew for a fact you were going to get two closings at eight thousand dollars, at sixteen gross, but eight thousand net, uh, would you quit your job immediately? Uh, would sure love to. Your employer's uh, not yeah. listening in. I happen to know. So <laughs> yeah, the, the the big challenge is you know uh, I have a wife and I have a family. I want to make. Well, get rid of them immediately. <laughs> Isn't that good advice, Tiff? You're married, aren't you? <laughs> my, wife was, my wife was listening. She's no longer anymore. Um, She's out. Out of the room. Um, she, um, yeah, but basically, you, you want to make sure that you're, you're set up because, as you know, it, it doesn't come in. You, know, you, you turn, the, you turn the, the faucet on and, and the water doesn't No, no, I'm asking a different you. question. Here's my question. If you knew for certain that every month you would have two closings, would you quit your job immediately? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, that's the, the dilemma is you don't know for certain. So yeah. here's here's the way I work through it with everybody who's tr- transitioning from full-time to part-time, especially if they're married. You know, like my wife is a CPA. She's sensible. Have you met my wife, Tiffany? No. She's very sensible. She's nothing like me. You know, like I'm a, a daredevil idiot. You know, she's like, hey, be careful and, you know, all that kind of crap. So... <laughs> Uh, sounds like uh, Tom's wife and my wife could go bowling, perhaps. I don't know. But uh, think this through. How many months in a row doing it part-time, having two closings at least per month, would you have to have before you said, I know I could let go of the other job, and then the 40 hours that you spend or more on your other job would be devoted to real estate uh, before you would kill, feel comfortable letting go of that. So it's the number of months in a row with two closings at least. I would say maybe two to three. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. Let's go with three. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I think your wife is agreeing with me. Not two. It's three. And, and Tiffany is holding up the number six. <laughs> I'm conservative. Are you really? <laughs> Okay. She looks nuts. I don't know how that is. I've seen your kids. They, they're, they're crazy. They're, I don't know. So, uh, so th- now you can reevaluate. If you, if you say, oh, my wife's giving me a hard time about the decision, you can add a month or two. You, know, you don't have to feel. But I think it's always good to go into that with a plan. So, but the goal, just between you and me, is going to be $320,000 net taxable income. $640,000 gross when you're full-time. And how many hours do you work uh, a week at your full-time job? And what are your hours daily? Do you just work weekdays? Uh, yeah, just weekdays. Pretty flexible. I can come in you know, early when I want. I can leave a little earlier if I want to. Um, so now I, I try and leave in the afternoon and, and go to the office and, and be productive, cold call, um, do that stuff because you have to time block. Um, what time do you get off? Uh, say around four o'clock. Now, when you get off at four, you've been there since when? Uh, about eight. Okay, so are you dead maybe. when you get off? Tired? Um, a little bit, sometimes. Are you hungry? Do you eat when you get home? Uh, typically don't eat so much later, maybe around seven, seven o'clock at night. Okay. 
So you're going to make calls when you get home. What time do you typically start comfortably making calls? Uh, say 4.30, 4.30, 5 o'clock. And then you do that until about 7? Uh, typically, I, I do it for about an hour at a time. Uh, so I, I do it an hour. And then, um, so for example, on the days that I call, I might go into work really early, leave early in the afternoon, start calling um, for an hour to actually an hour, then go home, uh, put my son to bed, and then pretty much it's bedtime. So here, and how many listing appointments on average do you schedule a week now doing it part-time? Zero. So we need to bump that number up. Yeah. Do you call for sale by owners every day? Uh, there's not really a huge list of for sale by owner, so on the Mojo. Well, if I there was it, one, do you call them every day? Not every day, no. How about expireds? Um, not every day, once a week. Okay, so here's here's what I'm going to recommend. Every fearless agent that's super successful does the exact same thing, so we don't need to reinvent the wheel. They start their day calling their sphere, asking for referrals. Then you would, which would maybe be one or two calls a day for most people, if that. Then uh, any new for sale by owners, not the old stale ones, and that would be one or two a day maybe. Then you go to any new expireds and canceleds. Then you go to follow-up calls from previous cold calling, which is where the real big bucks gets made. Then you go as many hours as you can fit in. Uh, just blasting through cold calls, three-line dialer on Mojo, <clears throat> mojocells.com, free plug. So um, here's a little uh, quiz question for you. It takes five – if you schedule five listing appointments a week, uh, two of them cancel, you go on three, and you get one. That would be normal. I'd be happy for you if that was your ratio. Um so that's what it takes to do 40 a year, 40 listings a year full-time at full commission, full-term listings, underpriced on day one, all of that. So if it takes 40, uh, to, to do 40, it takes five scheduled a week. I have agents that do 160, which is four times as many listings. You're good at math. How many listing appointments do they have to schedule a week? To do four times as many. So if they're doing... Um, if it takes if five scheduled out. to do 40, how many scheduled does it take to do 160? Oh, math. Four times as many. Word problems. Yeah, four, four times as many. <laughs> Tiffany says, I was told there'd be no math. Okay. <laughs> Here's the good news. They, it's still five. The yeah. thing about them is they never have anybody cancel. They're, they're so good on the phone that no one where they schedule a listing with ever cancels, and they get every listing they go on. No one ever says no. So they're going on better appointments. Uh, so you'll never need to schedule more than five. So this is a message of hope, Tom. Uh, but that's the funny thing is if you do five now when you're new uh, – when you're older and more better, more better, is that a thing? Mo more better. better. Mo better. Mo better. Mo better. <laughs> then you will never have to do more than five to make the really, really big bucks. So if you were to do, uh, just so you know what's possible, if I take 160 times 8,000, that would be 1.2 million, almost 1.3 million net taxable income. And my agents that do 160 do it with one assistant, so they don't have a team or any of that baloney. And if they had a team, they wouldn't make, do that many probably because that would hurt them. So how does that sound to you? I mean, it sounds great. That, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do is increase, you know, do call for sale by owners every day and the expireds. Make those your first call. So kind of my mindset when I'm calling. By the way, if any of this makes sense to any of those of you listening and you are earning less selling real estate than you wish you were and you're open to the idea of some having some help, if you would like to learn more like Tom did, 
You can call me anytime at 480-385-8810. That's my cell phone number. And like Tom said, I always pick up and, and answer you. Uh, and just see if what you're trying to do in your real estate career and what we do at Fearless Agent, if it would be a good fit. If it's not a good fit, I'll tell you that. I'll talk you out of doing it. Uh, we don't sell coaching. We make sure it's a good fit for you. And I do love talking to realtors. Don't ever think you're bothering me. So don't email me because there's no email in sales. Don't text me. There's no texting in sales. Always call me at 480-385-8810. And uh, if you can't afford coaching but you wish you could, you can go to fearlessagent.com, watch the free webinar. It's about 45 minutes. Take lots of notes. Go to our video training page. And uh, my guarantee to any of you is those free videos would be better coaching for free than you would pay any other coach any amount of money for. And again, if you ever have a question, you can call me. So the, 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 the mindset for prospecting is, I think, that one of the secrets to success. And, and what, the way I did it is I would call, for whatever reason, I didn't like calling my sphere asking for referrals. Like, I don't. That's just uncomfortable for me. Some people love that. I don't, that's not my love, but I did it. So I would call, you know, one or two of those, get those out of the way. Then I'm, my mindset when I'm calling my sphere is I can't wait to get through the sphere calls so I can get to the FISBOs. Then when I'm calling the for sale by owners, which is a more complicated call, um, and you're doing one line dialer for that. Uh, I can't wait to get through the for sale by owners so I can get to the expireds. Then when I'm calling my expireds, which again is a little more complicated call, can't wait to get through my expireds so I can, and, and the canceleds so I can get to the follow-up calls from previous cold calls. And those are a little more complicated because you have to look at your notes. What did we talk about last time? You know, why are we talking now? Where were you? You know, I've made notes about where they were moving to, that kind of stuff. And then I'm thinking, I can't wait to get through the follow-up calls. And again, that is where the really big bucks gets made ultimately. But I can't wait to get through those so I can just settle in to, you know, three-line dialing, blast up and down the street, cold calling, which is really the easiest. And, you know, if you think of um, Mojo as kind of an automatic message-leaving machine, which is what really, really is – there's really not a whole lot greater value to the live call. I mean, if you can leave a message at my house knowing that I do want to sell my house, but it's, we're not going to have a live conversation because I didn't pick up the phone. So if you have a choice of leaving a message at my house and I do want to sell my house or leaving a message at Tiffany's house knowing that she – or having a live conversation with Tiffany knowing that she doesn't want to sell her house – You'd rather leave the message anyway. So the uh, most of the business you're going to get in the future is going to be from the messages you left. Uh, probably about 60% of my business came from that. And they end up calling me. Or next time I call them, they remember me. So that's kind of, kind of how the real estate thing works. So uh, what other question? Do you have any other questions that I can help you with, Tom, that you're struggling with or wondering about right now? Sure. I mean, um, the, the big thing for me is, the, the time mapping. So I never, mm -hmm. you know, as, as a full-time agent, I would look at my, you know, my model, okay, like how much do I want to make? How many deals do I need? What's my conversion rate? What's my uh, listings appointment goal for the year? I mean, as a part-time guy, I'm sort of looking at it as like, hey, I just need X amount more transactions before I have enough money to make the jump. Mm -hmm. um, but how, you know, as I'm calling more and more and I'm talking to people, I mean, I would love and on, you know, how to manage that follow-up, you know. Um, if they say, well, I'm interested in selling in a year, I mean, obviously you should put down their contact info and, and follow up them, but what's the threshold, you know, what, when do you just ignore them versus follow up them? How well, I'm never going to ignore them. them. Once they make it into my database from the big list that I'm just cold calling through and they make it yeah. into my database, if, they, if they've – claimed that for certain in less than two years they will be moving i mean i'm going to be in real estate forever so i'll outlive them you know so in people's uh, what's, what's the threshold for putting them in your database well they'd have to be a real seller in other words they say absolutely for certain we are moving that is happening and it is happening for sure 
in less than two years. So the okay. person that says that actually is moving in three years. When somebody says, yeah, we're going to move in a couple of years, that means five. If they say, mm-hmm. yeah, we're probably going to move in a couple of years, that means 10. If they say, okay. yeah, someday we're going to move, that means they're going to be died in that house. They're never moving. Because, <laughs> you know, I don't know if you notice it or not, but moving is hell. It's not fun, right? Mm-hmm. So um, – You'll kind of get a feel for that as you're cold calling more and more. But what you really want to do is be very good at listening and the more calls you make. Now, how many hours a day do you call now on average weekdays? Uh, It's about three hours a week. Okay. So if you look at um, four hours a day is difficult to do when you're booking five listing appointments a week and going on them. You have to be a rock star at time management. So the people that do 160 listings a year, 120, that's what they're doing. Uh, and they're much better at it than most people. So so if you do four hours a day, causes you to get one listing appointment uh, a day. Uh, you're doing about a little, uh, about one-fifth of that. So let's see. Uh, what am I doing wrong? So that'd be 20%. 20% of 320,000. So you're on track to make 64,000 with those amount of hours. So that's just good for you to know. So go ahead and, and see if you can increase the number of hours. And by the way, this has a cumulative effect. It's like you're planting seeds that get harvested later when you're, when you're uh, dropping those messages to people. Here's the, here's the way and to look at it. That's super helpful to know, too, yeah. Yeah. In your neighborhood, uh, Bill, what year was your house built? 1938. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Tiffany's going, it probably is charming, isn't it? Yeah, I, I want to see it. Now we live in, Tiff and I live in a charm-free neighborhood. We do. We do. <laughs> it's kind of like strip malls and everything's beige. It's Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You go with what you can. So in, in your neighborhood, are there 100 houses or how many that you consider to be your little neighborhood? Uh, I mean – Several hundred. It's it's like dense. There's no there's no space. It's just house after house after house after house. After yeah, but house. the the houses that look like yours. I mean, how, is there a hundred or two hundred? Uh, three four hundred maybe. In my in, in in the three or four hundred area, how many houses have a for sale sign up right now? They're for sale now, under contract or active, or for sale. By Probably, owner. maybe. 25 to 30. That's a lot. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, the turnover is unique. That's why, I mean, because um, you have the government, you have the military. I mean, mm. it's, it's like, it's and it's, it's 24-7, 365 days a year. Um, people buy in the city, then they have a kid, then they move out to the suburbs. It's, These it's kids like, are the cause of all there. problems. That's why you have a puppy on yeah. your lap. Right. Yeah. Now, in your yeah, neighborhood, no, you, Tiffany lives in a neighborhood with about 100 houses in it. How many for sale signs are up right now, would you guess? Oh, gosh. Five? That's right. Probably four or five. So here's the way to look at it. When you're calling through a neighborhood and you're leaving messages, there's four houses that right now are for sale, probably. Okay? So that means... When you're leaving messages, now those are already listed, so you can't do business with them uh, and, until they expire and then they hire the fearless agent. That actually gets the job done. Yes. But when you're calling and you're leaving messages, you're dropping messages uh, in every hundred houses that you call. You're dropping messages on four people that will be thinking of selling their house in three months and four more that are thinking of selling in six months and four more that are thinking of selling in nine months and four more that are thinking of selling in 12 months. That's the way it works. If there's four up now, you know three months from now, there's going to be four different ones, and four mo- and three months after that, there'll be four new ones. That is the way it works. I think people don't think that through. So the message-leaving machine that is Mojo, and of course, you're leaving the fearless agent message, which is the right one, then uh, 
you know, that's going to pay off for you like crazy in the future. And it's just like us. And I, I get this call all the time. People are whining. I'm not getting any. This is my whining voice. I'm, I'm imitating my coaching students, not Tom, but the other ones that go, <laughs> not getting any results. I go, just, just, you know, say your prayers and keep calling, right? So uh, then they all of a sudden, they go, you know what? Like I just got this call yesterday, this guy, he calls me up. He goes, I just want to thank you for staying on me, making me make my calls. It's paying off. I'm booking five a week. Now it's easy. You know, they, they planted the seeds and now they're harvesting. So so that's the way it goes. And by the way, Tom, I want to thank you very much for joining us today. If you would like to send your referral to Tom Miller in D.C., he's licensed in D.C., Maryland, V.A., everywhere, every 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 state. You know, it's okay. unbelievable, the district in two states. So you can call him toll-free day or night at 732-216-8347. Is that correct, Tom? That's right. And Tiffany, thank you for joining us today with your thank puppy. Thank you for having me. And once again, we want to thank all of you for joining us today. Please do visit us at fearlessagent.com. You can call me directly at 480-385-8810. Please do give us your review of this podcast on iTunes. And visit us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, a nearby auto dealership if I'm getting my car fixed. Starbucks, you know, wherever we're hanging out. And until next week, always do what Tom does. Have fun. Always do what Tiffany does. Be humble. And most of all, what I do, be fearless. Thanks, gang.